Okay, I'd like to tell you about the, the other part of Faraday's law. Faraday's law and how it induces electric fields. Okay, so um, if we have a, a magnetic field that's changing with time and we put a hoop in here, um, let's say that the X's are increasing with time. So if the X's are increasing as time goes on, then what happens is um, this hoop is going to try and stop those X's from increasing by making um, dots. And so to make dots, it's going to induce a current this way around it. Okay. But it turns out that um, not only will an, a current be induced, but there, there's an electric field that's producing that current. And that electric field is a non-electrostatic electric field. What I mean by that is that electric field that's producing that current, that electric field that's pointing this way, if there's a current going this way, because the X's are increasing, then there must be an electric field going around here. And um, that electric field is not caused by a buildup of positive charge or negative charge. It's a non-electrostatic electric field. It's an induced field, an, an induced electric field. And as you might guess, um, in this wire right here, we would expect that the field would be this way. And on this side, it should be this way. And now here's the thing, is that that electric field is there whether there's a hoop or not. Get rid of the hoop, and what we're saying is if the X's are changing, there'll be an induced electric field. As long as this magnetic field is changing, it's going to induce an electric field around here. When you put the wire in there, that field will push current around the wire. But um, if but even if there is no wire, there's still an electric field, a non-electrostatic induced electric field. So um, this is the second part of Faraday's law. And it's, this is the part we know about, that a changing magnetic flux induces a voltage. But the other part is that the loop that, that, the, that we were just talking about if you do a bunch of E dot DLs around that loop, that is the voltage. We shouldn't be surprised too much by that because we've already said in, a, in previous videos that the voltage at A with respect to B is equal to um, integrating from A to B E dot DL. Um, so this this was our equation, our most general equation for voltage to find the voltage difference, the voltage at A with respect to B. We just integrated from A to B, E dot DL. What is a little weird about this one though is when we integrate around a circle, if you remember when we did this, when we integrated around a circle, we always got zero. In this case, we won't because this is not a, a, a um, an electrostatic field. This is this uh, this this one here is a non-electrostatic and also a non-conservative field. Okay, so let me um, let me just say one more thing about this before we apply it. So, by changing the magnetic flux in an area, if you change the magnetic flux in an area, yeah, you we're going to say the first thing that happens. They all happen at the same time, but. I'd like you to, to look at it as what happens is you induce an electric field in that around that area then. So when you change the magnetic flux, you induce an electric field. And that in turn is what causes the induced voltage. And then it's the voltage that if you have a wire in there, you need to have a, com a complete wire, you'll get current. So you'll get induced current. So these all happen at once. But I'd like you to think of it as is the changing magnetic field induces an electric field which gives you the voltage which can sometimes give you the current if you have a complete circuit. Okay, so let's see how this works. Um, imagine we have um, this area. Now this isn't a hoop um, or anything like that. This is just a boundary of the magnetic field right now. Don't think of this as a, a metal or anything like this. It's just an area, a circular area that has a magnetic field. The field is going in because we're seeing the arrows going away from us. And the field is actually getting bigger. Um, every second it's growing um, a little bit more. And so at zero seconds, it's the field is zero. But at one second, it's two Teslas. At two seconds, 
it's eight Teslas. At three seconds, it's 18 Teslas. And so um, it's growing. Okay, now here's the thing. What I'm going to tell you then is that there's an electric field. And the electric field, if let's, let's first just put a wire in here. So I'm going to put a wire in here. The wire is going to be green. There's a wire. And let's have it have a radius lowercase r. The, the area here is, a, is um, capital R. But that's my wire. That's the only wire in this picture. Okay, if I want to know what EMF will be in this wire then, um, I'll just apply the Faraday's law, the, the side that we already know about. E induced will equal the rate at which the flux changes with time. Okay, well the flux at any given time, the flux is going to be equal to um, the B here. That's the B times the A. Pi times R squared. That's the flux at any given time. I'll go back to my darker marker. I think it's easier to see. Well, then the EMF that's induced is just the derivative of this with respect to time, the negative derivative of this with respect to time. So if I take the derivative with respect to time, that's going to that's gonna give me um, a 4t over second squared pi r squared and then um, a t. You check me on that derivative. I think it's okay. Is that the negative derivative with respect to time? Assuming that everything is constant as it is. Yeah, so that's the EMF induced. Okay, now it turns out then that um, if I wanted to know the field that's induced around there, well, that's my, I can draw a Faradian loop. So I, I'm going to put the Faradian loop right where that is. In fact, I don't even need the, the um, wire to be there, and the electric field will still be there. So let me draw the Faradian loop, Faradian loop once again. It's going to be out here like this. I'm saying Faradian, like a Farad's law. That's a Faradian loop. It's got a radius r. And now I'm going to, since I know what the, the EMF is, it's, it was um, negative 4 Teslas squared pi r squared t. Um, that's equal to the closed loop integral of e dot dr. Now the e is not just any old e. The e that's the e on the Faradian loop. And the DRs, or DLs rather, we'll call them DLs, they make up the Faradian loop. So I know that um, the E is going to look like this. That will be the E. Right here it's going to look like this. Right here it's going to look like this. And the DLs make up the Faradian loop. So there's these little vectors that are infinitesimally small that make up the Faradian loop. So just like all the other laws that we call Maxwell's equations, let's just call that EMF right now. The EMF is going to be equal to, now the first thing you do with this is you can get rid of the dot product because E and DL, get rid of the dot product, because E and DL, they are always parallel. E is parallel to DL at all points on the Faradian loop. And then I can pull E out of the integral because E is the same here, is here, is here because of the symmetry of it. So I'm pulling E out of the integral. And when I add up all the DLs, I simply get 2 pi R. So that's how I'm going to get E. 